Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Jessica Devereaux in Baltimore. In 2008, two years into Stephen Harper's administration, scientists working for the federal agency Environment Canada were told they can't speak with the press unless they had approval from higher up. Now it seems to have ramped up even more with the Canadian government being accused of silencing scientists, especially in regards to the Alberta tar sands, which as you know would be the source of oil that would flow through the proposed Keystone XL pipeline. With us to discuss this issue is activist and author Eve Angler. Welcome back to The Real News, Eve. Thanks for having me. So Stephen Harper, he himself being from Alberta, home of Canada's oil boom, has long been known as an ally of Canadian fossil fuel industry. Can you speak about the ways in which the government has been trying to silence scientists? Yeah, I mean, the first thing is, is that they, they are following a very... Um, a, a very strongly pro tar sands or extractivist uh, policy, as some have put forward, uh, in favor of uh, you know, mining interests. Uh, obviously, tar sands interests is type of mining, um, and in alongside that is uh, is a hostility to uh, international climate negotiations, pulling out of the Kyoto Protocol, um, but also is a hostility to uh, investigating and you know researching. Um, uh, some of the, uh, the the changes to our uh, to our climate to to our to our environment, and um, in uh, in 2007 they brought in new rules around uh, Environment Canada uh, researchers, uh, uh, climate researchers' ability to talk to the media specifically, and internal uh, uh, government documents showed that it led to an immediate 80 percent reduction in the amount of uh, media attention that Environment Canada climate researchers. Uh, had uh, or year over year, um, so a huge drop in in in, in media uh, coverage of Environment Canada researchers. Uh, they've more recently cut uh, uh, the uh, the national roundtable on the environment and the economy. Just completely uh, eliminated this, and this was a body that had done a certain amount of climate research. Uh, cut thousands of uh, uh, money for thousands of researchers. Laid off uh, thousands of uh, of uh, uh, scientists researchers. And uh, and in recent um, uh, well last week there was there's a uh, there's growing resistance um, to this and last week there was major protests uh, in 17 cities across the country uh, uh, under the banner standing up for scientists for science uh, that was led by uh, by scientists um, denouncing uh, uh, these cuts which have uh, which have received a, a certain amount of uh, of uh, hostility internationally as well. So let's talk about how this information has affected policy. What kind of change has there been under Stephen Harper in terms of the federal government dismantling environmental restrictions? A significant change, most, uh, most importantly uh, uh, with regards to um, uh, pulling out of the Kyoto Protocol, but also uh, in terms of uh, protected lakes, a couple thousands in their, in their uh, Omnibus budget bill a year ago, they they eliminated protections for a couple thousand lakes across the country by uh, rewriting the rules. Uh, they've uh, they've been uh, lax, uh, you know, with regards to and this is more of a provincial matter, but lax with regards to um, uh, the the pollution that comes from the tar sands. There's you know a company about a month ago came out that is just leaking uh, uh, leaking. Uh, Pollution into the into the ground up in the Alberta tar sands. The company can't figure out uh, where it's coming from, how to stop it. Um, so there's been a there's been a, 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 a it's, this is a government that is prioritized this corporate profit uh, very clearly. And uh, one of the things that's an obstacle to corporate profit, of course, is um, is uh, you know evidence based uh, uh, research uh, you know around uh, the ecological toll of uh, of uh, the different uh, you know tar sands, different other mining. Uh, uh, um, uh, policies and the government has made it very clear that it wants to uh, um, eliminate uh, as much as possible one of the hindrances to to, to corporate profit, which is uh, which is uh, which is research into uh, the ecological toll of uh, of, uh, of different uh, di different extractivist um, uh, projects. Okay, and Eve, you mentioned that there's been public protests going on um, against the muzzling of scientists. What has the media's response been to all these demonstrations? Well, the media's response has been uh, it's been it's been okay. It's actually been somewhat sympathetic. Um, 
relative to the corporate media in general, um, partly because the other, another side to the con to conservatives um, uh, muzzling of scientists is this, this extreme information control. And so, you know, they're blocking scientists from, you know, publishing, uh, government funded scientists from, you know, pub publishing in academic journals and, and from talking to journalists. But they're also, at the same time, they're also, you know, further controlling uh, the press gallery at the Canadian Press Club and, and, and uh, the, the, the ministers and, and the different ministries uh, respond to journalists uh, quite um, uh, control information that they that they give to journalists as well. So there's a certain level of, um, uh, uh, I guess, sympathy among uh, among uh, journalists to the plight of of scientists, um, and uh, and uh, there's a, I think a certain level of international embarrassment. Uh, last uh, Sunday, the New York Times uh, ran an editorial that criticized. Uh, the muzzling of scientists in Canada, uh, which got a, a certain amount of play. And there's been a number of uh, env uh, international environmental journalists and international uh, leading international uh, scientists that have, that have criticized um, uh, the government's policy. Um, but, uh, but again, so you have a certain level of sympathy. And if you read the papers closely, there is the coverage of, of, um, of what's going on. But there's a, a fairly little of sort of uh, connecting the dots between this aggressive hostility towards uh, towards science, science and and uh, and the discussion of, of of science and their strongly pro corporate uh, policy. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Eve. Thanks for having me. And thank you for joining us on the Real News Network.